All right, class, we are reading a story today called Not Quite Snow White. Before we get into the story, I want you to make sure you are focusing today, especially paying close attention to the structure of the story. Here we see an anchor chart with our story structure. Story structure is a fancy word for saying how the story is organized. And we're talking particularly about the plot, what happens in the beginning, the middle, and the end. Other parts of a story structure that are very important and that we have been talking about all year is the setting, that is where and when a story is happening, and the characters, who is participating in this story. But first, let's quickly go over what happens in the beginning, middle, and end of a story. In the beginning of a story is usually when we hear about the conflict which is a fancy second grade word for just the problem. What is a problem that the characters are facing in the story? So you wanna pay close attention while you're reading today's story to identify, hmm, what is the problem that the characters are facing? And then in the middle of all stories, the characters go through different things, different events happen as the character tries to solve it. At the end, the problem is solved, or what is called the resolution. That is how whatever the characters were struggling against is wrapped up. Usually this happens towards the end of a story. While you're reading, make sure you are looking for evidence and clues and details to explain all of these different parts. And then at the end of our story, there are some questions I'm gonna ask you to answer. So you might wanna have some paper a pencil nearby to take notes as we go through our story. Not quite Snow White. This is written by an author named Ashley Franklin, and these beautiful illustrations are made by an artist named Ebony Glenn. Let's get right into it. Not quite Snow White. For Tamika, it was always the right time and place to dance and sing. Tamika had a hip hop rolling happy dance. Oh, let me read that right again. Tamika had a hip rolling happy dance, a swayful sad dance, a stomping mad dance, and a hair flicking just because she felt fabulous dance. Here we see a picture of her just dancing through the fields. Now remember, you're gonna to try to remember who the characters are. So you might even wanna write that down when you see it. What was this character's name again? Tamika. Make sure you look at this in your book, in the slides, sorry about my dog, and write down her name, Tamika. She sang high with the tweeting birds and low with the croaking frogs. She always shared her love of music and movement with an audience, stuffed, and unstuffed. What does that mean, stuffed and unstuffed? She sang high with the tweeting birds and low with the croaking frogs. She always shared her love of music and movement with an audience, stuffed and unstuffed. Oh, I see, so she is singing for the birds, the animals, and even her stuffed animals. Tamika loved the stage. It was her perfect place. She was the star of every show, and she loved every show that she starred in. She had been a cucumber, a space cowgirl, a dinosaur, and her favorite part, a singing mermaid. On stage, Tamika felt like she could, oh, I can't quite see it on my screen. On stage, Tamika felt like, she could be singing or she could be anyone she wanted to be, but she had never been a princess. Now she would finally have her chance. And what do we see there? A big poster advertising for Snow White, the musical. Hmm. Now remember, we're paying attention not just to the characters, but to the setting. Think about where this story is taking place. Tamika was so excited that she went to both days of auditions for the Snow White musical. On the first day, she arrived super early. She helped friends with their lines, kept count for the dancers, and shooed butterflies from nervous tummies so songs could be sung. After the audition, Tamika heard some of the other kids whispering, 
She can't be Snow White. She's too tall. She's much too chubby. And she's too brown. Hmm. Look at how Tamika is feeling. How do you think she would be feeling after hearing that? Hmm, now we can see it with her expression in these pictures. Tamika looked at her legs. They were long. Maybe the kids were right. A princess shouldn't be taller than her prince, should she? She looked at her belly. Maybe what the kids said was true. She could not remember any chubby princesses. Tamika looked at her skin. She was brown. How could a girl with brown skin play a princess like Snow White? Could these kids be wrong? Maybe she was wrong for wanting to be the princess. Now don't forget we're paying attention to story structure. But what did I say happens at the beginning of a story? We learn about the conflict the problem. So if you've heard about the problem in today's story, you might want to write a note to yourself so you can answer some questions later. Tamika slouched and sucked in her belly. She tried pulling down her sleeves, but there was no getting around being brown. Here we see her sitting. How does she feel on the school bus? Hmm. We can see how she's feeling by just looking at these pictures. At dinner, Tamika didn't tap her feet or clang rhythms with her spoon. How do you think the parents are feeling about Tamika right now? They look a little worried. She's not as musical as she usually is. Is something wrong? Asked her mom. The other kid said, I'm too tall, too chubby and too brown. I'm not right for Snow White, said Tamika. You've got it all wrong, mom said. You are tall enough, chubby enough, and brown enough to be a perfect princess. Besides, said her dad, Snow White is just pretend. You've always been my real princess. Hmm, now look at Tamika. How does she feel now? You're just enough of all the right stuff. He kissed her forehead. Tamika smiled. Maybe her parents were onto something. At the audition the next day, Tamika watched all the other kids get on stage and do their best. Here we see these kids auditioning. They do look like they're doing well. It was Tamika's turn at last. She remembered what her parents had said, but her long legs were still a little jittery. She closed her eyes and imagined she was singing and dancing for her favorite audience of friends, stuffed and unstuffed. Now remember, we wanna remember the events of these, this story, the things that happened in the middle that help her solve her problems. She closed her eyes and imagined she was singing and dancing for her favorite audience of friends, stuffed and unstuffed. Then she remembered the joy she felt when performing, Tamika knew she could do it, and she did. She shone like the star she was. She showed how she could dance, she could sing. She loved herself as much as she loved music and movement. Tamika was a perfectly poised princess. When her audition was over, Tamika looked out to smiling faces. Tamika wasn't too much of anything. And that is the end of our story. Look at the applause. Maybe she was just enough of all the right stuff. All right, so now you may wanna pause this video and rewind it and hear it again, or take some time to open up the Google Slides file so you can read the story to yourself. And then you're gonna answer each of these questions. So make sure you're opening up the Google Slides file, go to the very end, and there are three pages of questions. I'll read them to you. First, what is the setting in the story? So remember what that word setting means. That's a fancy second grade word, Go back and look in the book, describe what is the setting of this story. Next, who are the characters in the story? 
name some of the characters, the important ones that are in this story. Now let's get into some of the story structure. What is the problem or conflict in the story? So go back and read and type right there and tell me what is the problem or conflict in the story? Next, we have a few more questions. We're just gonna retell what happened in the beginning of the story. In a couple of sentences, tell me what happens in the beginning of the story. Next, tell me what happened in the middle of the story. And finally, what happens at the end of the story? Two more questions. We talked about a problem that happened in the beginning. How was that problem solved? How was Tamika's problem solved at the end of the story? Who helped her? What did they do? How did she solve her problem? And our last question, what is the story not quite Snow White mostly about? Imagine you're talking to your family member, your brother, your sister, somebody who's never heard it. What is it mostly about? How do you know? Use details from that story to support your answer. Tell people the main idea. What is this story in just a couple of sentences, maybe two sentences, what is not quite Snow White mostly about? And that is it. When you are finished, make sure you did your best work, read over it, finish all your work for the day, and then don't forget to hit turn in. Thank you all.